Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So beautiful. Isn't the presence of the Lord so beautiful? Isn't the Lord so beautiful? God is so beautiful. I was thinking, you know, even God's wrath. God's wrath is beautiful. Everything about God is beautiful. Everything about God is beautiful. Oh, hallelujah. And while I was just there, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And I saw the angels. I saw the angels and they were, there was a whole, they were standing in a queue, in a, in a, in a line, one after the other. And I saw the throne. I thought, saw the throne. It was, it was a distance away. It was, there was, it was rows and rows of angels standing there, either side. And the angel right next to me, they were emerald, these angels. They were emerald in colour. I've never seen angels like that before. The angel just looked at me, the one closest to me, just blinked. And in that moment, I knew the angel was wondering, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And this is the question. This is the question about asking this. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because we are the hands and we are the feet of Jesus in these last days. What are we going to do? And the angels are poised. They're waiting. They're waiting. And they're like, what, what, what? What are we going to do? What are they going to do, Lord? I, I, I could hear the question. It was like going down. It was like going down the rows of the angels to the throne. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Are they going to do anything? Are they going to do anything? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to go to Windsor. We're going to go to Windsor before the meeting. Just speaking to Barrett. And the Holy Spirit said, go to Windsor. Amen. Go to Windsor. Because so I could see, I could see the, the, the demonic stronghold over yeah. Windsor. And I could see, I could see the demons, and they were in a like a in a in a circle, all holding like, like holding ranks. But they don't know what's coming. Amen. They don't know what's coming to Windsor. <laughs> I tell you, it's gonna be powerful. So we're gonna go to Windsor soon, because the Holy Spirit said soon, it needs to happen soon. So I'll go to Windsor and Barrett, you're going to preach. You're going to preach there on the streets. It's going to be powerful. Barrett, who was there preaching today on the streets. Who was there on the streets today? It was good. It was powerful. It was really powerful. You know, I love it when people either receive or reject the message because I know that God is speaking. God is speaking. There was one man, he was angry. So I was talking about Pride Month and what I was proud of. Or what, what I was proud of, proud to be a follower of Jesus. And he just stopped and he tried to intimidate me. He was just standing there, real, real angry. I think you saw him, Mike. He was standing there, real angry. And do you know what happened? The Holy Spirit just came upon me and I just looked him straight in the eyes and just kept preaching. And I could feel the power of the Lord. And I said to Austin afterwards, this was a little bit, a little taste of what Stephen, of what Stephen must have experienced. And, and I said to Austin, as the, as, the, as the persecution grows, so does the anointing. So does the power of God. And I said something to us. So I said, well, Lord, bring on the persecution then. Because I want, I want the power of God. I want the power of Jesus to just, to just, just rush through us. He's going to do it, you know. If we lay down our lives for Jesus, if we lay down our lives for Jesus, he's going to do it. He's going to come. He's going to come in power. He came in power today. It's been good. It's been good. But, you know, it's not just a one-off, is it? It's not just a one-off. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. This is our life. Jesus laid down his life for us. What can we do for him? What can we do for him? We can surely lay down our lives for Jesus. Are we going to lay our lives down for Jesus? Because much of the church isn't doing it. Much of the church isn't laying down his life for Jesus. He laid his life down for us. He's calling out to us. As Mike said, the time is running out. We were talking today, weren't we, over coffee? It's just going so fast now, isn't it? The older we get, the, the time is racing. The time is racing. We'll be standing before God before we know it. Now, do you ever, do you ever imagine, you know, it's like well, 2023, maybe Christmas, you think about, well, Christmas is going to come, and then all of a sudden you're there, 
You're like, oh well, I, I, I thought about that about six months ago. This is what it's going to be like. We're going to be like, well, now I'm standing in front of God. I thought about it all my life, but now here I am. Friends, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We say all the time on the streets, we're going to be in a box. We're going to be in a box. The, the lost, they don't want to hear it. But friends, we need to hear it. We need to know it. We need to know that we're going to stand before Jesus. We're going to stand before our Lord. And what are we going to say to him? What are we going to say to him? Friends, I pray that we've got, we got something to give him. I pray that we've got something to give him because we went and we did. We did the Great Commission. Oh, hallelujah. God is calling us in this hour. He's calling us in this hour. You know, God spoke to Jonah, didn't he? God spoke to Jonah. And he said, go. He said, go. What did Jonah do? What did Jonah do? He ran. He ran away, he was afraid, he, was, he ran away. He didn't want to go, he didn't like those people. He didn't want to listen to God, he ran away. And God spoke to me the other day, and he said, this is what's happening with the church. I'm saying, go, I'm saying, go. Where did he go? He took, he took a boat and he went. He disobeyed God, he disobeyed God. Where was he? Sound asleep, the Bible says. Sound asleep, much of the church is sound asleep. Sound asleep. In a little luxury cruiser, while the world is going to hell. And it's time, it's time for us to wake up, and you know? When did Jonah wake up? When did Jonah actually wake up? There was a storm, wasn't there? There was a storm. A storm brewed up. God sent a storm. God sent a storm. And there was a storm today. There was a storm going around the earth. And God is saying, wake up. Wake up. You know, it's never good, is it, to disobey God? It's never good to disobey God. Much of the church is disobeying God today. Much of the church is disobeying God. But there's a storm blowing, there's a storm raging. And that storm is set to get a whole lot worse. I know it, but we've got nothing to fear. We've got nothing to fear. We're with God, we've got nothing to fear. And we can say, bring it on. Bring on the storm, Lord, and send me. Send me. Eventually, it's funny, isn't it? Eventually, eventually, Jonah obeyed the Lord. It's funny that, wasn't it? After all the calamities that came upon him, thrown into the water, thought he was going to drown, and then he called upon the name of the Lord. And that fish spat him out, and he went and he preached the gospel. What happened? What happened? Nineveh got saved. Nineveh got saved. But oh, what a journey. What a journey. Friends, are we going to be asleep like the disciples? Like the disciples in Jesus' final moments on the earth? Are we going to be sleeping? Are we going to be found sleeping? He kept coming back to them, didn't he? He said, are you still asleep? Are you still asleep? A spiritual slumber. A spiritual slumber had set upon them. And they were asleep in Jesus, Jesus' final moments. And you know, Jesus said, keep watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. Much of the church is falling into temptation today. They're denying Jesus, just like Peter. Peter denied Jesus. He wouldn't have done it, you know, if he'd stayed awake. He wouldn't have fallen into that temptation. He was so gutted. He was so gutted, wasn't he, that he, that he denied his Lord. And I'm saying, Lord, Lord, don't let me deny you. Don't let me deny you. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus loved Peter? He said, do you love me? Do you love me? Jesus didn't hold it against him. But friend, we've got to not deny. We've got to not deny Jesus in these final hours because he's saying to me and he's saying to us, are you going to watch and pray? Are you going to watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation? And much of the church, friends, is asleep. They're on that little leisure cruiser singing their songs. They've been taken by the world. They've been taken by the wokeism of this world. They've been taken by entertainment. Much of the church is being entertained today. They won't come unless they're entertained. Beautiful singers, pretty girls singing the worship songs. So everyone can just stare. The beautiful carpets, the beautiful chairs. Everything's lovely. We've got the best songs, all the songs, all the, all the guitars, everything. I'm not against any of it, friends, but I'm against it when it just is entertainment for the people. Take it away, I wonder what would happen. Take it all away, what would happen? The church, big day out. Friends, it makes me weep. The 
and church, big day out. Well, the world is going to hell. They got that little, I don't know what it is, what do they do? They cream teas and all that rubbish. The church, big day out. Well, Satan's having his big day out around the world. And everyone comes to gather to sing songs and clap and be entertained by all of the famous entertainers. It's worldly, friends. It's worldly and entertainment has entered the church. They've been conditioned, we've been conditioned to be entertained. And God is saying, come on, it's time to repent. We say we have everything, but we have nothing. We have nothing if we are without Jesus. The world is going to hell, and friends, we are going out, aren't we? We're going out, and it's time. Time is running out. We know we've got to do it. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Jesus said, go. And then so many people stay. I saw a Christian today. I saw a Christian today, and he walked past us, and he had disdain. He had disdain on his face. And I don't even know. Only God knows if he's born again. But they go to church and they do all the stuff. But friends, I'm asking, who is born again? It's time for us to lay down our lives for Jesus. Because if we're not laying down our lives for Jesus, friends, we can't be born again, can we? We can't be disciples. It's where the word discipline comes from. Disciple, discipline, people that are disciplined, people that are walking, walking as the Lord walks. So I'm saying, Lord, I want to walk as you. I want to walk as you. I want to walk as you. I don't want to. I don't want to walk my way. My way's rubbish. My way's rubbish. It's pathetic. I tried that one, and God had to destroy me. God had to destroy me many years ago. He had to destroy me so that He could make me. I wanted to. I wanted to preach the gospel and, and do all the stuff. I was doing it my own strength. I didn't know any other way. God knew my heart. God knew I wanted to serve Him. But the only way to do it was to totally destroy my life. Can you believe that? Destroyed my life. Destroyed my life and I was in I was in I was in a mess. I was in a mess and I couldn't worship God. I couldn't do anything. I thought God had left me. But it was a desert place that I'm so thankful for today. It went on for years. It went on for years. I couldn't open the Bible. I couldn't pray. I had a, I had a friend come one day and said, Shall we pray? And I said, No. No. And he was shocked and I was, had so much pain in my heart. I had so much pain in my heart. And one night, one night I was in my flats many, many years ago before I was married. And I was weeping and I was weeping before the Lord. Every night I'd weep. I'd go to bed crying. What's happened, God? What's happened? I wanted to serve you and what's happened? It's a disaster. I was alone. And I was weeping. And the Lord showed me the potter. Showed me the potter. And he showed me my, my pathetic, my pathetic attempt. And it was rubbish. It was a rubbish pot. It was a rubbish pot, friends. We've got to make sure that we allow the Lord to dig his thumbs in and to make us. We need to say, God, okay, if it means destroy me first. And then just call out to the Lord and say, God, do whatever you need to do. So that you can work in me, friends. And if you've got, if you've only got a few years left, don't worry, because God can do it. And like I said, He can do it. He can do a quick job on us, and He can send us out, send us out to do all of His will. Did you know it's possible to do all of God's will? David was a man after God's own heart. He could do all of God's will, all of God's will, friends. Do you want to be somebody? who is a man after God's own heart that does all of his will. I'm saying, Jesus, I want to do all of your will. And if it means die, I'll die for you. Amen. If it means I throw evangelize to my death, if it kills me, God's, God's telling me at the moment I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. So we're going to do more. We're going to do more and we're going to go every day. We're going to do it every day and I don't care if I get exhausted. We're going to go out and we're going to do it. I'll tell you something that I'm not told anybody. Tom Mike, Tom Orsler, Holy Spirit spoke to me at House Church a few weeks ago and, and also had a word that God was going to give us a blueprint. And I found myself thinking about this, what God told me to do. And I thought maybe 
my mind had wandered. You know, sometimes we're in prayer and our mind wanders onto something and we think, oh, hang on, I'm supposed to be praying. I thought it was one of those. And the Holy Spirit stopped me and was like, no, 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 this is something that you need to look at. God said, get a tent. Get a tent. Get a tent. And so I'm talking to a tent manufacturer. And we're going to go throughout the UK with a tent. God is bringing back these old time crusades. And he's raising up, and he's raising up street preachers across the UK. Because the time is imminent. It is imminent, and he, and he would call, he can do it in any of us. Friends, if he can do it in me, if he can do it in me, he can do it in anyone, because I was the shyest, the shyest boy in school. I didn't say boo to a goose. And people come up to me and say, well, I really admire you, you can pick up a microphone, I could never do that. Friends, if you only knew how scared I was, terrified, terrified to go to school every day. I used to cry. Going to school, I'd cry. Right from an early age. Didn't want my mum to leave me, and I'd cry at the window, and she was broken hearted in infant school. But it went on. It went on throughout my juniors and, 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 and the secondary school. I hated it. I was so nervous. Friends, God can work in any of us. Just pick up the microphone, and He will do it. You're a testimony to that, aren't you, Philippa? Pick up the microphone and she's preaching the gospel on the streets. And it's powerful. Singing, worshipping, and heaven opens. When, when Philippa and Howard are on the streets, I see heaven open and he's paving the way. It makes it so much easier to preach the gospel. Maybe God's called you to give out tracts, to give out, to give out booklets. But you never know, you never know the power of just giving out giving out a book or a tract or a gospel. My father told me a story only a couple of weeks ago. This would have been 50 years ago, 50 plus years ago, he was out walking, working. He went to someone's house. This man said, do you know who can change the world? My dad said, no, who's that? He said, Jesus, and my dad just laughed, just laughed. My dad said, oh, I was, I was, I'm ashamed now, but I laughed. But this man, he was, he was undeterred. And he, pulled the book off the bookshelf and he gave him his book. And he wrote in it a little message. And he gave it to my dad. My dad put it in his pocket. He got home, put it on the, on the bedside table. And some weeks later, he just reached over while he laying on the bed and turned to this book and he surrendered his life to Jesus. He surrendered his life to Jesus. That man never knew. Never knew. He could have thought, that was a shame, that man just laughed, people just laugh. People laugh, don't they? They walk past in the street, they laugh. But they hear the message of the gospel, and then later on it comes ringing back in that ear, in that spirit. You never know, friends, you never know who's going to get born again. And I thought, that man, he doesn't know. Well, maybe he knows now, he's in, he's in glory, he must be in glory now. He doesn't know, or he didn't know then, that that man, who was my dad, got saved. And my dad then went around preaching the gospel to every house that he went into. And he'd come home and he'd tell us, we'd sit around the meal table and he would tell us all the stories of all the people that he preached to. And then my father, he became such a witness to us in the home. And he would sing to the Lord. He'd be in the bathroom, be in the bathroom for hours, <laughs> worshipping the Lord, singing in tongues throughout the whole house. My mum would call it upstairs, Dave, are you finished yet? <laughs> but you know, we would be bathed in the glory of the Lord. He didn't know, he was just worshipping Jesus. And we would be bathed in the glory of the Lord. And then later, God called me, he took us to a, actually a tent meeting, Tent Crusade in 1977. And I gave my life to Jesus. I knew I was a sinner, can you believe it? Seven years old. Seven years old. I knew I was a sinner and I wasn't going to go and be with Jesus. Friends, God is calling us today to get out from the four walls of our comforting little homes and our churches. And he's saying, will you follow me? Will you follow me? I can see Jesus walking out here right now. 
He's walking out here and he said, will you follow me out the doors? Will you follow me into the uncomfortable places? We met a man today. We also met a man today. Well, he was going to kill someone today. He bought some knives. He had them in his bag. He was going to kill someone. And he met also up. He repented and took the knives back to the shop. This is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus is here. If we go out, we follow him. Follow him. Follow him. Oh, Jesus is here. He's here tonight. He's here tonight. Oh, Jesus is here tonight. He's so wonderful. Are we going to go? Are we going to stay? Are we going to sleep like Jonah? Friends, we don't really want to be sleeping in that boat. Because a great storm is going to be really troublesome for us. Because God really wants us to go. He really wanted Jonah to go. He really wanted Jonah to go, didn't he? He sent that fish. He didn't want Jonah to drown. He wanted Jonah to learn a lesson or two. Must have been terrifying, mustn't it? Sinking in the depths of the ocean. God wanted to bring him to a place of repentance and calling out to him. And then God said again to Jonah, go. Jonah, listen, are we going to listen? Is the church going to listen? Are we going to be taken by the, by the world, by the Babylonian system? So many people, there. I don't know how many people are just following, just following the system of the world and they're in the church. They got the TV blazing. The spirit of the world pouring out into the living room, pouring out into the bedroom, watching rubbish, 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 getting consumed by stupid stories about famous people, watching Coronation Street and EastEnders. God spoke to me years ago about EastEnders. See, that was a strategy of the devil, a strategy of the devil to deceive the nation into thinking life doesn't get much better than this. And the people in the home think, well actually my life's a little better. It's a little bit better than EastEnders. So they don't, they don't go, they don't go for anything better than that. It's a strategy of the devil. Because we can't be watching that rubbish. We can't be watching any of this rubbish. And some people say, well, I'll, I'll, they get offended when I say turn off the TV or chuck it away. It's one of the biggest things that people get offended, I'm talking about Christians, they get offended. You know why? Because it's an idol. It's an idol. They love it. They love the television. They say, well, I'll, I'll, watch, I'll, I'll watch the nature programs. As if that's okay. Yeah, but those nature programs have got evolution all the way through them, haven't they? They mention it all the time. I'm saying today, we don't come from monkeys. Don't let Darwin make a monkey out of you. We don't come from monkeys, do we? Hallelujah. Created in the image of God. I love it. I love it. And you can see it on the people's faces. They know it. They know it. They're denying it. But you can see it. They scuttle past. Like you've just exposed them. It's amazing. So you know you wasn't, you wasn't, you didn't come from a monkey. God made you in his image. Oh, hallelujah. So wonderful to preach the truth. Let's get out there and just preach truth in a world of lies. World lies, the mainstream media is lying, lying all the time, deceiving the masses. Deceiving the masses. This is how Satan deceives the inhabitants of the earth. It's all prophesied in here. It's all coming to pass, isn't it? It's all coming to pass. Mike was saying that the world's heard now. Pretty much everyone's heard the message, and then the end will come. But we're seeing it all coming to pass, aren't we? The cash to society, it's all being implemented, the economic crash that Mike was talking about yesterday, which is going to happen. It's going to happen at some point. When it happens, what are they going to do? Because they love a crisis, don't they? What are they going to do? They're going to resurrect the financial system, and it will be the mark of the beast. It will be the mark of the beast. Friends, we are on the brink. We're talking about it, talk about it in Davos this year, Tony Blair, our friend Tony Blair, he talked about it. It's all happening. They set up the infrastructure during lockdown. See all the cameras went up everywhere. 
for the 15 minute cities. It's all planned, it's all a strategy, friends. Oh, friends, but we are not of this kingdom. We're not of this kingdom, friends. We're not of this kingdom. Let's go out. Let's follow Jesus. Let's not follow the world. Let's not be deluded by the spirit of this world. You know, it's enter the church. I know churches where the work, the work agenda has entered. It's very, it's very difficult to spot for some people. But friends, when we're with Jesus, it's very easy to see. We say, get out. Get out of my church. Get out of Jesus' church. And so many people have accepted it. They've accepted it. This feminism, which is all part of the woke agenda. It's weird, isn't it? How, how the feminists are, are lesbians. Don't make any sense, does it? Everything's turned upside down. Everything's turned upside down. Because we've got to go out and tell the truth. We've got to tell, we've got to tell the truth. And not be, not be embarrassed. Not compromise. We've got to shout it from the rooftops. But it's all sin. We can't celebrate the sin, can we? Are we going to be silent? Are we going to be silent while this evil is perpetuated around the United Kingdom? In America, America's falling, you know. It's falling because they, they, they denied God. They denied God. It's falling. It's falling. Are we going to be taken by the spirit of the world, friends? The time is coming when it's all coming down. It's all coming down, friends. We've got to know who we serve. We've got to know who we serve. We're not going to serve the government. And they send that little, that little message, which they did, didn't they? The little test. Stay home, stay home. What about if God says go, go? What are we going to do? Listen to that rubbish phone? Put it down and go. I'll be going. I'll be the first out when the government says stay home. I'll be out with my microphone and I'll be preaching the gospel. So let's not listen to the spirit of this world that was to control and restrict the church and the gospel. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. And he wants to he wants to he wants to speak into our hearts. And those angels are looking at us. I saw that angel, big eye, <coughs> blinking right at me. And it was like that, that eye was speaking to me. What are you doing? What are you doing? They're asking that question, what are we doing? What are we doing? It's time. It's time, friends. We've got to, we've got to think about it. You know the hourglass, you know those old hourglasses? I wanted to bring one, I didn't have one. But you know those hourglasses, you see the sand passing through? It's going to be empty soon, friends. It's going to be empty soon. We haven't got any time to spare. We haven't got any time to waste. We haven't got any time to just talk about the gospel and not do it. We haven't got time to just listen, listen and then not do. We don't want to be just hearers, do we? We want to be doers, doers of the word because we're going to be standing before Jesus we're going to be standing before Jesus before not too long, friends. It's all going to be over. He's going to say, what did you do? So what did you do? What did you do for me? What are we going to say? Well, I was going to do that. Yeah, but what did you do? Well, I was going to have this idea, didn't I? Back in 1995. So yeah, that was a good idea, but you didn't do it. Because we don't want that, do we? We want Jesus to say, wow, look at this. What you did. What you did. died for us, friends. He died for us. We can die for him, can't we? Amen. Can't we die for him? Amen. Can't we die for Jesus? Die to live. Yeah. That's what I want on my tombstone if I get one. Died evangelising. I'd love that to be the thing that killed me. Evangelising. Imagine it. Stephen Imagine it, that was, his, that was the last thing he did, wasn't it? Wow, Stephen, he looked up, heaven opened, he saw Jesus standing there. Wow. Wow. 
you know, God is here for us. As much as we, as much as we open the door, He will come. He will come. He will come. We could open it just a little crack, or we could peer through the letterbox and, and just have a little bit of eye contact, or we can rip the door off the hinges and say, Jesus, come in. Amen. And when he comes in, he will, he will deliver the message to us. When we've had an encounter with God, we could do nothing else but go. Go. Just like, just like Isaiah. He had that encounter, didn't he? And you know, once you've had an encounter, you're totally undone. You're totally undone. So I'm, I'm just a sinner. Lord. And the next thing happens. Send me. Send me. God wants to send us out. God wants to send us out in this hour. And he's, he's raising up. He's raising up an army. He's raising up the church. And he's saying, okay, if you want to do that, you can do that. If you want to just sing Kumbaya, all your days, then do it. But, but this is my church. This is my church where, you, where you're out on the streets, dirty. Dirty. Getting dirty. Battling it through. I don't want, I want friends. I don't want to be singing Kumbaya. I don't want to be at the church big day out. Being entertained by all the big Christian bands. What the world is going to hell. It's time. It's time. The clock is ticking. Time is running out. We know how late it is. What does it say, Romans? Romans 13, isn't it? I don't know, I think it's Romans 13, 11. Time. Time is running out. Our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. It is nearer, isn't it? Our salvation is nearer now. We're going to be standing before God. We're going to be standing before Jesus. And he's saying, come on, let's do it. Let's do this. We can do it together with Jesus. We can do it together with each other. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun even to be persecuted for Jesus. It's fun. We did door to door years ago. And one lady was persecuting me. She was, she was evil. She was possessed by the devil. And she stood this close to me. And she was just swearing, swearing, swearing at my face for about five minutes. And I was having the most amazing encounter. <laughs> I was just standing there. And I was being flooded and filled with the Holy Spirit. I was like, Lord, I don't want to leave this place. She thought she was attacking me. I'm going to call the police. Her teenage daughter was laughing, the door mocking me. And I was just there. And, and also was up the road. And when she came, she, when I walked away, she said, I'm so sorry that happened. I said, oh, don't be sorry. I just had the most amazing encounter with Jesus. Amen. Friends, don't be afraid to go out. Don't be afraid to evangelize. Don't be afraid to be mocked. Jesus was mocked. Jesus was mocked. Jesus was stripped. Don't be, don't, don't be, don't be fearful. God will give it to us. God will give it to us. God will give it to us. He will give his peace. He promised to never leave us, didn't he? He said that when we go, he would never leave us. He will be with us until the very end. Until we breathe our last. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He wants to touch us tonight. He's already touched us mightily, hasn't he? Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing? How much do we want God? How much do we want God? Do we want him just a little bit? Do we want it just when we come through the doors here and then we go home and we forget about God and switch on the TV? Or do we want God 24 hours a day? You know, God wants to really transform our hearts. If we say, God, I'm for you. I'm for you and I'm not for anyone else. I'm for you and not for anyone else. God is looking, God is looking, he's scouring the earth for single-hearted people, not for adulterers, who say, I'm a Christian, and they go off and they do that thing. Are we going to just be for Jesus? Because he loves us. We say it in the streets, he loves us with an everlasting love. Isn't it amazing? 
For God so loved the world. I can't get bored of that scripture. We know it so well, don't we? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Oh, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It's perfume, isn't it, in the nostrils of those saved. But a stench of death. A stench of death to the wicked. But you know what? Nineveh. It says about Nineveh, doesn't it? When God called Jonah, it was because the wickedness of Nineveh had reached God. Do you realise the wickedness of this planet has reached God? Has reached God? It's a stench in his nostrils. I don't want, I don't want God to smell the wickedness of this planet. Do you want God to smell the wickedness of this planet? All the debauchery, all the murder of the innocent lives, those little children that don't even get the dignity of being called human. And crying under the altar with the martyrs. When will our blood be avenged? The stench, the stench is filling God's nostrils. It's reached up to heaven and he's saying to us, like he told Jonah, go, go, go. And if we obey, friends, we will see, we will see many come into the kingdom. There will be many lost. We've got to realise that. There will be many lost because Jesus said, broad is the road and many are on it. Narrow is the path. And I saw, funny, I saw a narrow path with that tent and there were people queuing up to come into the tent. To come into the tent. And you know, that, that tent that God spoke to me about, which we, we're going to have to do that because God, I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm speaking to this lady on Monday, this tent manufacturer. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to be a miracle. But I saw queues of people going in. And the Lord said to me, it's going to be like you do on the streets. Like you do on the streets, but it's going to be in a tent. It's going to be in a tent. And there's going to be the singing. It's going to be very simple, but there's something about it because we're obeying God that He's going to bring people. And they're going to see the tent. They're going to see people are going to see the tent, and they're going to be curious. You know, like when the circus comes to town, people see the tent, don't they? And you think, oh, I wonder what that was, wonder what's going on inside. God told me that people will be curious. And I've seen the leaflets, I've seen the leaflets as well. I've seen them. We're going to do massive leaflet drops. God has spoken to me about printing, printing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of leaflets. We've, we've started, we've got leaflets, we've designed. God wants us to print hundreds of thousands. And I've been praying, I've been looking actually to buy a, a printer, a proper printer that we can actually print the stuff ourselves. God wants us to have a tent and a printing press. Because these are the final moments. These are the final moments. These are the final moments. And I can hear Jesus saying it every day to me. It's all I'm living for now. Is it all we're living for? It's all I'm living for. I wake up and I just hear it ringing in my ears. It's the final moments. It's the final moments. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go and preach the gospel. Let's go and preach the gospel. And then the end will come. And every eye will see, even those who pierced him. He's coming on the clouds, we sung it tonight. He's coming on the clouds and every eye will see him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine seeing Jesus? Oh, we see through a glass darkly, but then we will see him full. We're going to see Jesus. And he's got fire in his eyes. He's got fire in his eyes. And he wants to burn. He wants to burn his holiness into us. And friends, when, when it's happened, we can't do anything else. We're sold. We're sold. We're sold out. We're sold out for God. We're sold out for Jesus. We can't do anything else. We can't do anything else. Everything else is a sin. Even the stuff that was a sin before becomes a sin. Because we're just sold out for God. We're, we're in his tabernacle. We're, we're in the secret place. And that's where we want to be. And that's where we want, we want to stay. And there's nowhere else. There's nowhere else. There's nowhere else. And when we're in the secret place, he says, go, go, go and be a minister of the gospel. Go and be an ambassador for me. Go and be an ambassador for me. Cast out the devils that have afflicted so many lives. We see them every, every week that we go out. So many people 
attacked by evil spirits. We've seen many manifest, and I'm saying, God, we need to see them delivered. We need to see the people delivered. Sometimes they come past, and they manifest, they growl. An eight-year-old boy growled. People, people growl. One man wasn't there recently. Amazing. He walked past just as Philip was singing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And this man, he walked past, he looked me straight in the eyes. And he said, I'm lost. I've never seen, I've never seen such pain. Such a cry of help. He said, I'm lost. Immediately we were able to pray with him, comfort him. And he wept, didn't he? He wept. He wept uncontrollably and he couldn't stop hugging us. He went from each of us, didn't he? Hugging us. Jesus is here. If we make ourselves available, Jesus will show up wherever we go. There's a lovely man, he's a Buddhist man, Brian, came to me today. He said he needed to charge his battery pack. He lives in a tent. He needed to charge his battery pack. He said, I've met this lovely Christian. I said, what have you? He said, yeah, I've met this lovely Christian. He said, he's going to charge my battery pack for me. I said, really? He said, yes, his name is Jason Carter. <laughs> I said, that would be my honour. He said, really? I said, of course, whenever you want your battery charged, I'll charge it for you. He said, thank you so much. God is working. God is working in his life. God is working in his life. He tripped up. He tripped up today. He nearly said, God bless you. <laughs> the Buddhist, he stopped himself. I knew, I knew what he was going to say. But God, God bless you. He doesn't believe in God, apparently. Friends, God is changing lives. He's changing hearts. We just go out. Wherever we are, in the queue, in the shops, at work, on the streets, wherever we go, the neighbour, the postman, whoever it is, let's give them Jesus. Because the time, the time, the time is imminent. The time is imminent. The great darkness is being poured out of the earth. It's going to get a lot worse. I know it is. It's going to get a lot worse in the lead up to the tribulation. And we need to, we need to have our security in Jesus. And once we, when we got our security in Jesus, we're busy doing his business, we're not worrying about saving ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is good. God is good, yeah. Amen. The Lord reminded me of uh, the cry of Jonah in that whale, in that fish. He said something very profound and very true. That was that moment of his repentance. He said, those who cling to worthless idols lose the grace that could be theirs. And the Lord is here asking us, are we clinging to worthless idols? Because if we do, it will happen like Jonah. We lose the grace. <coughs> and he's here to give that grace to each one of us. He gives the grace to those who say, here I am. Here I am, send me. Send me. Send me. And we stand here, Jason and I, not as those who have obtained, or oh, we are all that. We both go to the streets with fear and trembling. 
always, always. The Lord is teaching us, is teaching me. He will make us fishes of men. He said whenever someone does not receive a leaflet or is not very kind, praise me. Praise me. And he turned that. Instead of being a, an arrow in our heart, he's actually, he turns it into praise. And he teaches us every single time. So Jesus talked about having an encounter, which is fantastic and great, to have that. But what happens if we don't? Are we not going to go? Are we not going to obey because we haven't had some Isaiah experience? <coughs> the Lord has already said it in, in the book, to go. And maybe we say, yeah, but where? Anywhere. Who should I speak to, Lord? I've already said it in my book. Everywhere. Anyone. We don't have to. It's great when God directs. But if we don't hear anything, are we not going to go and speak? And again, I want to be very open. I'm not one that loves to take that step and speak to someone because that, you know, can be somebody that's going to bite you. But with the Lord, <laughs> with the Lord is something different. Doing it with the Lord, not alone, but with the Lord, is very different. Hallelujah. And the Lord earlier, as we were worshipping, I just felt this, I just felt he wanted me to do a declaration to declare to this town and to this country and to us, his bride. What the Lord is saying, hear me, Hear me, British Isles. Hear me, people of this nation. Hear me, because I am coming soon. Listen, listen to my children, to my servants. I am sounding the alarm, the alarm is been sounding and you have turned a deaf ear but I'm here to say listen open your ear to hear because the day I'm coming is soon and the day I'm coming is going to be terrible for you it's going to be a day that you will never wish it would come. Turn, turn to me. Get on your knees, United Kingdom. Get on your knees and repent, repent. Repent for rejecting me and rejecting my sacrifice. And to you, my bride, I say the same thing. Repent. Repent. To you as well, repent. Because the hour is late and there is much work to be done. And that this work cannot happen without you. Do you realize there are people they will be going to hell because you did not go 
and preach the gospel. You did not go to the neighbor. You did not go to your colleague. You did not go to the person next to you. And they will be doomed for eternity. But it's not too late to repent. And I will give you everything you need. I will give you the words. All you have to do is say, here I am. I'm going to open my mouth. I don't know what I'm going to say. But I will give you the words. The words of eternal life. And we will come home rejoicing. And heaven will rejoice for every sinner that will repent and receive me as their Lord and Saviour. Go, therefore. Go, therefore. The therefore is, I have given you authority, so therefore, go in my name and preach the gospel and baptize them and heal the sick and cast out devils and raise the dead. And I'm coming soon.